Hello and welcome to a Tuts Plus Quick Tip Screencast. My name is Cheryl Graham and in this video I'm going to show you how to use Creative Cloud Libraries. These are a new feature in Illustrator and Photoshop CC and are also available in Adobe mobile apps such as Brush, Shape, and Draw. Creative Cloud Libraries allow you to store frequently used assets and share them between applications. I'll show you how to create and save a library from Adobe Illustrator, then use the assets in that library in Adobe Photoshop. So let's get started. So you're going to want to have the Libraries panel open, and if you don't see that, it's under the Window menu. You can have different libraries for different projects, and I'm going to go ahead and create a new one. I'll call it CC Camera, and as soon as I create that library, you see this animated icon at the bottom of the panel, which means that it's syncing to my Creative Cloud account. And here you get a sort of oddly worded message telling you that this is in fact a library, and to drag something from your document into the panel. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll take this logo and drag it on top of the panel. I get a green plus sign on my cursor and a plus sign on the library panel itself. Once I've dragged that into the library's panel, a thumbnail shows up under the word graphics because Illustrator recognizes that this is a vector graphic. You can see the little AI icon beside it telling you that this is artwork that was originally created in Illustrator. And here at the bottom of the panel, you see this double arrow thing going around, and that's telling me that my library is in the process of being synced. I can rename this graphic if I want to to keep things organized. I'll call it Logo Black. I'll select this white logo, and instead of dragging into the panel, you can also click this button at the bottom, which will add the graphic that way. And once again, I'll change the name of this asset as well. There's those double arrows again telling me that the library is updating and syncing. You'll often have a color palette that you use for each project, so I can add those colors to my library as well. I've got some squares filled with those swatches, and I'll click the square, and then click Add Fill Color at the bottom of the panel. Now if I were to drag that square directly into the panel, I would get a square graphic, and I'm looking to get color swatches, so this is the way that I have to do it. Click on an object that has that fill color, and then click Add Fill Color at the bottom of the panel. The colors are automatically named with their hex values, and if I hover over it with my cursor, you can see that it's also got the RGB breakdown because I'm working on an RGB document in Illustrator. Just like a graphic, you can rename the color swatch in the Libraries panel. For example, I'll name this one 60% Gray. You can also save type styles into Creative Cloud Libraries, so I'll select some area type here, and then click the Add Text Style at the bottom of the panel and that comes in as a text style, so you can see the font name and the point size. I'll do that again for this header text, and once again I get the name of the font, the size, and the color. You can drag vector groups into the panel. Here I have just a couple of buttons with some live text for interface elements, and I can drag those in or click the Add Graphic button at the bottom of the panel. Again, you're going to see those double arrows going around and around as the library updates and syncs to your cloud. So now that I've built up a library in Illustrator, let's go over to Photoshop. Here I've got a website interface that I'm working on, and I'll open that CC camera library that I created in Illustrator, and there are all of my assets that I added to that library. You can see that they're organized by type, color, textiles, etc., and I can also view them in a list view instead of icons. So if you have a lot of assets, it might be easier to view them in list view. So now I can go about adding some of these assets to my Photoshop document. I saved those swatches from Illustrator, and that helps you be consistent between applications. So I have this orange box here that I just kind of eyeballed the color, and I want to change it to that dark orange that I'm using. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that you have the layer selected that your element is on that you want to change, and then go up to the colors and click that swatch, and now I have that same orange that I'm using throughout my documents. Same thing with type styles. I'm going to select this text layer, and then click on my Myriad Pro text style, and that will update that there. So again, I'm remaining consistent in all of my various elements on this web page. So now I'm going to add my logo, and I can select it in the library, then right-click on it and choose Use in Document. 
And if you use vector smart objects, this will look familiar. You get a bounding box with a low res preview that you can scale and reposition until you get it where you want it, and then click the return or enter key to commit to that change. And there's my logo on its own layer, and you can see the smart object icon in the layers panel. I can also just drag an asset onto my Photoshop document. I'll do that with this deal of the week box. And again, I can resize it and position it until I get it just right. Then I can click the enter button or the check mark in the control panel. You can also add layer effects from Photoshop to your Creative Cloud library. So I'm going to select my logo layer and then click the FX button at the bottom of the panel. And I'll just add a drop shadow. I'll use the settings that are already there for now and click OK. Now I have a drop shadow on my logo, and with that layer still selected, I'm now going to add this layer style to my Creative Cloud library. You can see it gets its own category, Layer Styles, and it's got a name that I want to change to make it more descriptive. I'll call it Drop Shadow. So now I'm going to drag another copy of that logo into my document, and then I can just simply click on Drop Shadow, making sure that I have that layer selected, and that will apply those same settings. So that's kind of handy to, again, remain consistent in your design. Not all assets can translate between the two programs. So if I go back to Illustrator, you can see that my library has updated, and it has that drop shadow layer style there in the panel. However, I can't use this in Illustrator because that's a Photoshop effect that doesn't translate. Even if I select one of my vector objects here and try to click on it or right click on it, nothing happens because that's just one of those things that doesn't go both ways between Photoshop and Illustrator. So while Creative Cloud libraries have some shortcomings, you can't share libraries between different team members, for example, it does give you another way to stay organized and consistent. If you're mostly an Illustrator user, you might prefer to stick with Illustrator's templates and dedicated libraries like symbols, swatches, and graphic styles. But if you regularly use both Illustrator and Photoshop, Creative Cloud Libraries offers a way to keep all of your frequently used assets in one place. Everything is synced to your Creative Cloud account, so they're backed up for safekeeping. If you're working on a different computer, for example, or on a mobile device with Adobe's mobile apps, you'll always have the things you need at the ready.